Inner Solar Europe is at the center of a dynamic European PV market and is the international place to be when it comes to solar and everything that happens around it. Here you can see all the innovations that drive the market. So, welcome to Inner Solar Europe 2022. Actually, there's two main reasons for, for, for solar to, to, on, to be on the rise. Number one is a very positive one. We are getting so cheap that we can kick out oil and gas literally anywhere in the world. And the second thing is a bit more of a negative reason. We have conflicts about oil. We have the Ukraine crisis. We see that we have to get rid of oil and gas. And that's the second reason. We just launched our global market outlook. What we are, are showing in this report is that we added some 168 gigawatt of solar globally last year, an all-time high. And if you look at the forecasts, they also look very bright. You know that we've crossed the one terawatt benchmark basically just a couple of weeks ago globally. So one terawatt installed some flabbergasting 1,000 gigawatt of solar globally. And we will reach in only three and a half years, we will reach two terawatt. So a development which is incredibly fast, but that should not hide that we need to go much faster if we want to reach the climate targets we need to reach. Here at InterSolar Europe, it's the sheer size of the fair and the different subjects it touches. So we see the new business models, uh, we see everything is converging a, a little bit and moving together. We see little innovations like in-frame inverters in modules. The large inverters are now running the software for the energy management. We see actual application of agricultural PV and uh, a lot of floating uh, PV that is actually happening and being deployed out there. We see hydrogen move in, big industrial players moving into the world of electrolyzer and creating green hydrogen and that is very exciting and there's a lot to see here. Horst Dufner is with me now and we want to talk about Inner Solar. We were celebrating Inner Solar's 30th birthday last year, and, yeah. um, but you're with uh, it for, I think, 20 years, right? Exactly. <clears throat> it's more than 20 years, actually. And uh, what is really fascinating that we had the ideas 20 years ago to accelerate the European solar market, PV market, uh, to establish a European platform so that really the people who are involved get in touch with uh, other people, that they can create um, new projects with their ideas and it's still still fascinating how many people are involved and how much power they bring in in this uh, exhibition and conference. Let's go into detail a little bit. Um, what are we seeing here this year in terms of innovations, new ideas, corporations, um, big projects? What can be seen? Well, as you are also Mr. Indusola Award, I would say, you know that we still have a lot of improvements, innovations for the solar cell technologies, for models with a larger wafer format. But since a few years, there are new applications like AgriPV, the parallel um, usage of um, agriculture and power generation, floating PV, and uh, building integrated systems. This has to do something that we need more space to all to install all these new systems. And um, I would also say what we can see here is the, the topic of PPAs. It's an alternative financing model for the industry and it's um, excellent to see this growth and I think we can expect a lot in the next years. Well, 
then let's talk about the next years. What are we going to talk about if we meet next year again at uh, Inner Solar Europe uh, 2023? What, where does all this lead us to? <laughs> A very hard question, Kilian. Uh, you know how dynamic our industry is and it's hard to predict. But definitely it took us a long time to be here. But uh, I think with the strong growth now we we'll see the re-establishment of the European PV industry in the whole value chain. We will see uh, more cross-sector technologies, for instance, PV and heat pumps. And definitely it's all about uh, grid stability. So we will see new projects, new applications for solar hybrid plants. So a combination of wind, solar and storage. And as I said, this is the prediction in my view, but I'm absolutely convinced in two or three years we will talk about other topics. All right, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to that and well, all the best for the at least next 30 years. Thanks, Kilian. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
We just launched our global market outlook. You can also, by the way, find it at our booth, uh, B3109, a freshly printed copy. What we are, are showing in this report is that we added some 168 gigawatt of solar globally last year, an all-time high. And if you look at the forecasts, they also look very bright. You know that we've crossed the one terawatt benchmark basically just a couple of weeks ago globally. So one terawatt installed some flabbergasting 1,000 gigawatt of solar globally. And we will reach in only three and a half years, we will reach two terawatt. So a development which is incredibly fast, but that should not hide that we need to go much faster if we want to reach the climate targets we need to reach. If you don't see it in Munich at Intersolar, you are not going to see it anywhere. This is where the whole community is coming together, where people are meeting uh, the biggest trade fair in Europe. And uh, you see the excitement. Every, everyone is you know, just so excited to do business uh, and to take solar forward. First of all, let me tell you that uh, as all of us, we're deeply shocked about what's going on in the Ukraine. And uh, we stand in full solidarity with the Ukraine. But what it has shown is the dependencies we have. And uh, this is clearly showing us that we need to go much faster in deploying renewables, becoming more resilient by deploying renewables. So, you know, it is about energy security. It is about making sure that energy prices are at a level that make households being able to pay their energy bills, and on the other hand, make it possible for European industry, for European companies to remain competitive. And not to be forgotten, obviously, we still need to hit our climate targets. So we have a climate urgency, and that continues to, to be the case. And we need to get to 1.5 degrees Celsius, um, you know, the goal we set ourselves at the Paris Agreement. Now, if you ask me whether there's any change in the debate at European level, Policymakers are gearing up. We will see a solar strategy coming in a couple of days' time that has been planned already before the pandemic. A great opportunity to accelerate the deployment of solar. And we've seen a leak, so there's some, some good ideas which have been taken up there. But also repower EU more generally, which will also come on the 18th of May, which should really take renewables and solar in particular to the next level with, for example, a higher renewables target. We hope to see 45% renewables going forward. That's what we have been calling for in the last couple of months. And uh, we are very happy that European policymakers are following us on that request. We want to see more resilience. We want to see more diversity. That's what the pandemic has shown. That's what also the Ukraine crisis has shown. Uh, you know, there needs to be more resilience in Europe. So first of all, because of that, it's the right time. Second, we never ever witnessed such a strong growth of solar, exponential growth. So demand is a very important factor. So also uh, for that reason, it is the right timing. And last but not least, we have the technologies in Europe. So we need to bank on it and we need to make sure that these technologies are produced in Europe. I do think what we need to achieve is being competitive in Europe. And that needs the right framework conditions. Uh, so we need to have financing for projects. We need to have low electricity prices for companies who want to produce uh, in Europe. We need to bank on the sustainability, you know, where we are very strong on. But if you want to uh, know a couple of advantages, sustainability is one. We are very strong on that. The other thing is that in Europe, we still have the whole value chain. We just need to scale it up. Uh, and third, not to be forgotten, we are technology leaders in Europe. So we are among the three top technology providers in, in the world, together with uh, South Korea, together with Japan. And this is what we need to use and bring on the ground.
Well, I'm on the exhibition floor right now at the booth of BSW, which is the German Solar Association. And with me is David Riedepult. David, it's great to be back. Oh, we're really glad to be back. And I can tell you, you can hear the buzz here, the 12 halls that we have. Oh, my God. I plan to walk through it later today because East and West, uh, East and, uh, West entrance are open uh, and we're quite excited uh, to be here. Yes. So let's talk about the role of photovoltaics for these immense demands that we have. How do you rate that? Yeah, it's quite astonishing to see both domestically um, in Europe and worldwide uh, how, you know, how much solar is supposed to be built. So uh, together with the other uh, renewable energies, depending on your geographic situations, they can really be used to compensate for the conventionals. Um, but a massive scale up is is important. So what we have to do is we have to stop to think about electricity alone, we have to think about all of the other sectors and they have to be integrated in an intelligent manner and managed in an intelligent manner in order uh, to do that. And I think the versatility of PV is really the key to that because it can be on a very small scale in a solar home system in a residential, it can be um, you know an entire quarter or an industry quarter, it can be a power plant and it can be a source for fuel for e-cars um, as well as feed an electrolyzer for, for hydrogen and all of these other things and with the prices uh, still as low as they are uh, we're really really seeing uh, that that demand can be met and these goals can actually be realized. Talking about realized goals, talking about politics, mm -hmm. um, as we know the new German government is um, totally with renewables but you still have some demands right? How do they look like? We wouldn't be a lobby organization if we didn't. But, uh, you know, there are some devils in the detail. There are three things driving the market now in Germany and worldwide. And these are the outside factors. One is the war against Ukraine, uh, which has really also uh, taken people that a, a, a very stark look at energy supply. We also have the recovery from the pandemic, the economic recovery. And you know what? The climate crisis it hasn't gone away. The planet keeps warming and we still need uh, to fight that. So the government has more than doubled the PV installation rate as a goal in 2030 to 215 gigawatts in 2030 and 400 gigawatts a, a decade later. So in order to do that, uh, you know, there are a few things that, that need doing. We see uh, some very positive improvements. There are going to be more tenders because naturally a lot of these um, installations, this massive deployment has to be not only on roofs, but in the open field. Um, but we are also seeing some details where the remuneration for these large plants is, is decreasing, where we no longer live in a world where the prices are always just declining. And the other thing, is the workforce. We need to double our workforce um, in Germany. We see that a lot of the electricians, um, you know, the 50,000 electricians so far who don't install solar are coming into the sectors, roofers are coming into the sectors, but this has to be a concerted um, effort. And the last uh, barrier that we are facing is that there isn't enough land. We need open field installation. Land is made available through the states, through the communes, and that takes time. However, time is of the essence. It's already, what? May 2022 and 2030 is not far away. So that was the one side. The other side, of course, is the industry that you're talking mm -hmm. for. Um, and we have this, well, rapid growth already now, and it's going to be even bigger in the upcoming years. Uh, how can the industry handle that? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we think you're absolutely right because without bringing money in from private investment from the private sector, this can't be scaled to this degree. So uh, I think what we are seeing is a renaissance, and you can, you can see this here, of production in Europe. Uh, we're seeing uh, more and more factories scaling their existing production. Uh, we're seeing new players coming into the market and people are trying to plug uh, the, the holes that have, have appeared in the value chain. However, we believe also that free trade is really important uh, to this. So the free flow of goods um, is going to happen. So I hope uh, 
Um, and I think that the supply chain issues that we have uh, are going to be overcome. You can, you can see people are here and they're sourcing. They're sourcing materials, they're finding new partners. And what we have seen in the past also, whenever a whole something appeared, something was scarce, uh, people stepped up, the industry stepped up, invested and created these, these products. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how it works and, and the marketplace where it happens is right here. And uh, do you see other bottlenecks um, for this expansion? Is there anything else that you would well, mention here? I mean, in, in Germany, it's uh, the supply of, of land. As I have said, there isn't enough uh, yet. It's always three things. Uh, it's the framework conditions. Uh, that have to be adopted, so availability of land. Something interest, interesting we're seeing in France, uh, France has uh, laws for Olympic Games. So if a French city wins a winter or summer Olympic Games, they have a speed-up process for um, the bureaucracy to get something built. And they're trying to apply that to renewable energy as a whole, and solar in particular. So we need an Olympic um, effort in the framework conditions. We need financing because it's always in an upfront investment. But I think in Europe and Germany, that's not a big issue, but it's a big issue in, in other countries where uh, the, you have currency risks, uh, for instance. And then skilled labor was already mentioned uh, with the scaling up this is a job engine on the positive end, on the negative end, you know, the people are not going to fall on trees, they need to be trained, all these systems need to be planned, they need to be installed and they need to be maintained. So I think there is a massive push uh, to come into the sector, but we also see that a lot of young people are interested uh, to enter and a lot of countries where it's important uh, that they take up renewable energy, that they take up um, solar, uh, these countries have a, a labor force, have a lot of young people that can be trained indeed. All right, well then let's look at uh, some solutions at uh, least for all these issues that you just mentioned. Let's take a look at what can be seen here at InnoSolar Euro 2022. What kind of impressions do you get and uh, what impresses you the most here? I think the sheer size of the fair is just the 12 halls east and west are open is really impressive and the buzz that is here. But there is a lot of innovation uh, that is happening. So we're seeing little things like uh, in-frame inverters. I haven't seen that before. Uh, a lot of things are converging. So now the big inverters, they run the software for the energy uh, management. Uh, we're seeing the bigger modules we've, we've talked about with, with more yield. It's always that game to ever more yield, less material. Um, we're seeing it with the batteries that the different technologies are becoming, uh, you know, are entering the field. We are seeing uh, big industry players moving into the world of electrolyzers and green hydrogen. Uh, so we're seeing the combination of PV in large scale and small scale and off-grid. And in off-grid and on-grid, we're also seeing a convergence. Off-grids are getting bigger, smaller grids are connect connected with one another, and they're more fields um, of application productive use that are actually happening, such as uh, food processing, cooling, um, as well as actually agri uh, PV that is in actual use with the uh, bifacial modules that is actually being done, being deployed and happening rather than being pilot projects. All right, so a lot of stuff to see. I guess we are going through the halls now and just have a look and you just enjoy the upcoming program. Take care. Thank you very much, David. By the way.